Hello, and welcome to day four of our 2948 anniversary special. I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Chris Thomas. Today, we continue to celebrate our community with our biggest free fly event to date. Throughout next week, we'll be featuring a different Star Citizen ship manufacturer every day and making all their flyable ships available to test fly for free. Yes, so anyone with an RSI account can get into the game during the anniversary special and try out all 80 flyable ships, which is super cool. Uh, but today's featured manufacturer is Aegeus Dynamics. Yes, and to discuss their ships, here are John Crew, Adam Weiser, Kirk Tomei, and Jared Huckabee. So we are here on day four of our eight-day anniversary special, exploring all the various manufacturers of Star Citizen ships, 136 ships. We, I, I counted them in the break. There are 80 flyable, and today we are getting to the most prolific manufacturer of Star Citizen spaceships, Aegis Dynamics. So when I say Aegis Dynamics to each one of you, what's the first word that comes to mind? Military. Right. Military, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Sleek. Sleek? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Messer from, uh, <laughs> from a lore guy. Yeah. Lore guy. Aegis seem to be almost like modern day military styling. Mm. That hasn't really progressed 900 years. You look at the Aegis ships in game versus modern day aircraft, and you can see the similarities. Where the you, Eclipse. Yeah, the self bomber. Eclipse. Mm -hmm. The Gladius is, again, very similar to things. It's got wings, which a lot of our spaceships don't have. Hey, we reckon that when we introduce atmospheric flight and planets, yeah. and <laughs> ships are supposed to have wings. Yeah. <laughs> Not just because it looks cool. Yeah, and, and from a lore perspective too, it makes sense that they do have kind of like this, this sense of this tie of, of kind of modern military uh, ships because they've been, they are one of the oldest ship manufacturers in game. They've been around for hundreds of years. So when I, when I hear Aegis from a narrative perspective, I'm thinking about hundreds of years of history. They were basically, when the Messers took over, it, they, be, they became the favorite of the Messer regime. So they got all the military contracts. Mm -hmm. They got all the money to develop this technology and do all these things and really expand their line. And then when the Messers got deposed, obviously that company just gets kicked out the door. So so um, a great way to tie it back in was like we just wrote into the lore that they were so well built, they, they were so good at what they did that basically this culture um, among just kind of everyday citizens went to go and find these decommissioned military ships and start to repurpose them for hauling cargo or for just protecting themselves or for this or that. Um, and that in and of itself led to a resurgence in the company. It's kind of unfair because, you know, they get the bulk of the ships <laughs> and so you if, you, if, you, if you're a fan of the other manufacturers, you feel a little bit left out. Why, 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 why is that, John? Why so many Aegis ships? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Aegis was the first uh, manufacturer that we actually developed the style sheet for. That's yeah. just what I was going to yeah. say. Aegis was a style guide that we that we hit. We mm. hit strong really early on. Yeah, like when, of, you, when you know you found something. A lot of those early ships, they were, they were just almost like scattered concepts of mm -hmm. here's a ship from this manufacturer, here's a ship from this manufacturer. Whereas with Aegis, we, we developed that style guide and mm -hmm. sort of developed the family, mm -hmm. where that you can see the tie between the Gladius, the uh, Retaliator, the Saber, the, Saber, the Vanguard, mm -hmm. um, the Eclipse takes a lot of the Saber right. from it. So you, you have these, like, you can look at them all side by side and know they are the same family. Mm -hmm. And then even the ships that kind of stretch what it means to be an Aegis ship, like the Avenger. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Avenger. Uh, one of the absolute most popular ships in, in our game. I think it's like number three in overall ownership in our mm -hmm. entire yeah. community. Space Penguin. I mean, that, that, yeah. that Space Penguin, that Space yeah. Penguin, the yeah. Avenger. Uh, it's not just a good looking ship, it's a good all around mm. ship. Yeah. Of course, it's just such a small ship. It's, it's it is capable. Of yeah. Of and yeah. It feels especially, big. Especially because it also can incorporate cargo. Yeah. yeah. So that exactly. adds to it a lot. Uh, from the first Aegis ship, the Avenger, to our most recent edition, the Hammerhead. Now, the Hammerhead went live with Alpha 3.3, and like, I don't think you can see a Star Citizen stream or YouTube without seeing multiple Hammerheads out there just pounding on each other. How exciting was it to get basically our first taste of capital ship gameplay? Yeah, it was, it's, it's not like quite a fully-fledged capital yeah. ship, but it's like the biggest combat, like dedicated combat ship we have in the game at this point. Mm -hmm. And we had big ships in there, we had multi-crew ships in there, but yeah, this is the one that really promoted like all the turret gameplay. What type of player would want to check out the the Hammerhead? Who's the Hammerhead for? Uh, it's it's for those guys that like, like to shoot things up. It's, it's there <laughs> to take the fight. 
to pay for I it. I think so. because of how effective the uh, turrets are, it's uh, for that type of person that also has a lot of friends that they mm. can, uh, you know, join along the, the adventure. So yeah. You bring up a good point there. I want to talk about, you know, I don't want this all to seem like sunshine and rainbows. The, the Hammerhead has some drawbacks. Yeah. It's the multi-crew gameplay. It's not mm -hmm. something for, it's not so like poor Adam here who, you know, yeah, no, usually plays by himself. <laughs> you know, he's, he's not going to, maybe a Hammerhead isn't the right choice. Yeah, for. it's definitely something that uh, you're going to want friends with because it is just meant to go out there and uh, get into the thick of it and, and wreck stuff. All right, so I want to do some word association now. I want to throw out a couple Aegis ships since there are so many Aegis ships, John. <laughs> I want to throw out some, some, the names of some Aegis ships and just give me a one word word association for you. Where's off the top of your head? Gladius. Uh, fighter. Okay. Mm. Uh, basic. <laughs> Send your letters to <laughs> Kirk Joe Maker. <laughs> for for, the only reason I say basic is because I can't use more than one term, but basic all around. Very basic. <laughs> basic all around her, uh, as far as uh, combat ship is concerned. Yeah, it's like your starter military. Ship. Right, it's great. Something yeah. has, something has to be where you're that, that's, that's not a bad thing, too. Yeah. It's, no, it's something. You don't think a Gladius being basic means it's not capable. Right, no, yeah. but it, it, and it's very singular in its purpose. Yeah. Uh, you go out and you shoot things with it. Yeah. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Vanguard. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> the Vanguard's very hard to put in. Like, it is. Just yeah. one word. There's, mm -hmm. there's lots of things you could say about the Vanguard that... I would say troubled, one. if we're being troubled. completely honest. Yeah, there's obviously the, the Vanguard's got a, a long story. Um, it's, the concept was mm -hmm. quite well received, and then the in-game version of it was less well received, to, to put it one way. Troubled. So troubled, yeah. troubled. Um, there were a lot of reasons for why that happened. Uh, quite a few we've talked about in the past, but I think when we go to do the variants mm -hmm. that we'll probably go back to the base Vanguard and do some little tweaks, like... Not a full rework. Not, not a full, like, put it all in the bin, start again, job. Uh, the Reclaimer. Gigantic. Gigantic, <laughs> that it is. <laughs> salvage. That works. That's, that's yep. as appropriate as anything else. It's yep. our major salvage platform. Uh, salvage gameplay not currently in Star Citizen, but, you know, on the roadmap for yep. next year. So, and, uh, all right. Let's go even bigger than the Reclaimer, the Idris. Railgun. Railgun. <laughs> All right. The Railgun is a feature specific to the Idris M. By default. By yeah. default. Available during our anniversary promotion every year uh, is the Idris P, which is a variant of the Idris M. Yeah. Walk us through a 101, the differences between an Idris M and an Idris P. It's like, like a lot of ships in our law, they, they originally have a military purpose. Uh, and like real worlds, you, you can't go to the military and go, can I just buy this jet fighter, please? No, that I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to use it for bad things on this. But the Idris P is the civilian stripped down sort of, not, not end of life, but surplus stock. So they take all the, the goodies off it and fit it out with other things. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have the railgun as standard. It's got the hard point for it. So if you can find uh, a, size, a size 10 railgun kicking around somewhere, you can throw it on and it will work again. So it loses the, the big ship-to-ship -ship cannons on it. But to make up for that, it has four additional remote turrets. So they're all controlled from the bridge. So this thing has like 10 turrets on it of varying sizes. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something here. We, we got Drake coming tomorrow. We'll talk about the Kraken recently revealed at CitizenCon. But since the Kraken has been introduced, there have been a lot of you know, Idris owners that have been kind of, you know, t talking about, well, hey, what, they got the crack in the, cr mm -hmm. you know, what good is my, what good is my Idris? And we made a lot of good arguments about, you know, the, the Idris, the Idris M, is, the rail gun is still going to, you know, take, you know, take out a crack and whatever. But I'm hearing things about a possible aftermarket solution. Mm -hmm. Maybe Aegis offering something in addition to the M and the P? Adam, maybe they might be, uh, uh, maybe uh, they might be working on something. Yeah. Kirk. I get told nothing. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> all right. Uh, Aegis ships, 23 all told. If you had every Aegis ship in your fleet mm. and you, had to, you could keep only one, what's the one Aegis ship you keep? I'm going to have to choose uh, the Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Just because it is almost like a, a better version of the Retaliator um, as far as the... the uh, multi crew. All the retaliator fans, <laughs> send your letters to Kirk Tomei, care of Fat Green Games. I'm going to have to go to the Avenger. The just, Avenger? Yeah, just because that's, that's how I'm going to probably play. I'm going to be by myself in a small ship going off. Uh, 
either tracking down some bounties or maybe picking up a box of cargo someplace. I'm not going to go try take on an entire Vandal fleet by myself in, a, in an Idris. Uh, don't really have any friends, so can't really <laughs> screw it up. I'm glad so, you finally admitted it. Uh, yeah, you, you brought me to that conclusion, Darren. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here with us. Uh, this is day four of our anniversary special. We'll be back so many. tomorrow with Drake <laughs> Interplanetary, and I'm going to bring the Kraken up. I'm going to try one more time and see if I get something better next time. No. No. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. Cool. Jared. Yes, very cool. Thanks, guys. Now, get into the game and get to know Aegeus Dynamics. Remember, each manufacturer's ships will only be available for 24 hours. There's actually a lot of Aegeus ships, so there's a lot to get to know today. You have the rest of the week, though, to try out the brand new Anvil Arrow. Uh, so don't forget to fly it or test it or do something with it. And remember, <laughs> head to the IAE West uh, going on in Lawville right now to check out the ships in-game. That's right, and after flying the Anvil Arrow, along with all the Aegeus ships, head to the website to take our anniversary special quiz, where you can show us how much you know about the ships of Star Citizen. Your score could even get you into a drawing for the opportunity to win your very own Anvil Arrow. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so that's it for today. Join us tomorrow, where the featured manufacturer will be the slightly controversial Drake Interplanetary. Until then, have fun and fly safe. We will see you in, in the, the verse. verse. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.